This video is a continuation in our series on the lymphatic system, and we will be looking at two different components of the lymphatic system, lymph and lymphatic vessels. So let's first take a look at lymph. Lymph is a clear, colorless liquid that is derived from our interstitial fluid. So fluid from our blood is going to leave our blood and go into our interstitial spaces. Now protein cannot leave our blood, so this lymph is not going to contain a lot of protein because protein is simply too big to leave our capillaries. But this interstitial fluid in between the spaces of our cells is going to be forced into our lymphatic capillaries. And these capillaries have larger holes than our blood capillaries do. And so they can let in whole cells into our lymph. And so our lymph may contain things like hormones, bacteria, uh, other pathogens, cellular debris, so if we have any old, dead, or dying cells, they may make it into our lymph. Um, traveling lymphocytes may be in our lymph. And then we may also see some traveling cancer cells. So lymph is derived from our interstitial fluid and contains everything that our interstitial fluid might contain, including electrolytes and good cell products and things along those lines. Now let's take a look at our lymphatic vessels to see how lymph travels through our body. When we take a look at our lymphatic vessels, we are going to start with our smallest lymphatic vessels, which are called lymphatic capillaries or terminal lymphatics. We see terminal lymphatics in close association with our capillary beds because this is where our interstitial fluid is going to come from. So as fluid is forced out of the capillary, fluid from the tissue will be forced into the terminal lymphatics. Now these cells, as you saw on the previous slide, do overlap and they create, may create one-way valves. So let's go back and take a look at that right quick. So here you see that our cells are doing some overlapping. This overlapping is going to allow fluid to enter the capillary, but if the pressure inside of our capillary, our lymphatic capillary, is higher than the pressure in our interstitial fluid, that valve is going to close and it does not allow lymph to leave. So we've got one-way flow of fluid from the interstitium into our lymphatic capillary. The holes between our cells are fairly large and so they will allow whole cells to enter our lymphatic capillary including bacteria, viruses, uh, lymphocytes, wandering macrophages, and any other cellular debris that might be present in that tissue. From our lymphatic capillaries, we are going to join into ever increasingly large vessels. So from our lymphatic capillaries, we are going to travel into collecting vessels. So here our lymph is flowing this direction into our collecting vessels. Then we go to lymphatic trunks, which are going to drain a particular area of the body, say your right arm. These lead into collecting ducts, which are really fairly large, and then our collecting ducts are going to empty our lymph into our right and left subclavian veins, depending on what side of the body you're on. Once our lymph enters our subclavian veins, it is going to flow to our heart, where it enters normal uh, pulmonary and systemic circulation. 
Now, almost all of our lymphatic vessels are going to contain valves. Basically, all of our lymphatic vessels, except our terminal lymphatics, contain valves. And these valves are going to help us with one-way flow of lymph. So if our lymph attempts to go in the wrong direction, those valves are going to close and they do not allow the lymph to move backwards. Instead, we only have one-way flow of lymph toward our subclavian veins. So let's take a look at this in our body. Our body can be divided into two different areas. We have the right side of our body above our diaphragm, and then we have all the rest of our body. So our right lymphatic duct is going to drain the area that is green over here, and it only drains the right side of our body above our diaphragm. Okay, and then our thoracic duct, which we see labeled here, is going to drain all of the left side of our body, including everything below our diaphragm on both sides of our body. And both of these collecting ducts are going to drain into our right and left subclavian veins right before our internal jugulars connect up with the subclavian to form the brachiocephalic veins. So here in our left subclavian vein and in our right subclavian vein, our lymphatic vessels are returning lymph to the circulatory system. If you have any questions regarding lymph and lymphatic vessels, please never hesitate to contact your instructor.